Hey everybody, welcome to Civics in a Civic. It's Constitution Day and what better way to celebrate than by driving around the DC area in a Civic talking about civics. I'm Mary Patterson, your driver and asker of questions, and with me in the passenger seat is BRI's senior fellow, <laughs> scholar, author, my personal chat GPT, Tony Williams. <laughs> Tony, are you ready to talk civics? I, I am always ready to talk civics, Mary. Hang on to your coffee. Here we go. I got my coffee right here. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, so I just want to say for your benefit that I do have a valid driver's license and I've been driving for 20 some years and in those 20 some years I have never gotten a ticket. No, that's not true. I've gotten two tickets, I think, but neither of them were my fault. So um, you're in good hands. Well, I was not actually worried about tickets, really more accidents, but I noticed you didn't mention those. No. Well, I was in one accident, but that also was not my fault. Oh, it so, never is. So we are actually driving. We are going by the Potomac River and the Tidal Basin. So we're going to see some cool monuments along the way. We're going to see the Lincoln Memorial. We'll see the Washington Monument. We are going to pass Tony's favorite monument, the Lyndon B. Johnson Memorial Grove. <laughs> that will be coming up right here on our right. Shout out to LBJ. We're celebrating Constitution Day. It's a big deal here at the Bill of Rights Institute. So my first question for you is going to be, what's the big deal? What is the big deal, right? I mean, September 17th rolls around every year. Some schools, universities kind of mandated to, to teach about it, but I think, I think it's a good opportunity though. You know I mean, at BRI, we reflect on founding principles, founding ideals, pretty much every day, right? Eight hours a day, every day. Uh, and, and that's what we do, right? But it's a great opportunity, I think, for students, teachers to, uh, to, to and, and, and citizens too, right? To just uh, reflect on who we are as Americans, right? What do we believe in? What unites us? An anonymous teacher in my days of teaching used to give out a Constitution crossword puzzle on Constitution Day and that was the extent of the celebration. So I like what you said about uh, founding principles or this idea of ideas, right? So it's not just the actual document that's like, you know, in the National Archives, can't steal it, Tony's tried. Um, but these ideas that are always with us and they're also a big deal, capital B, capital D here at BRI. So what what are these founding principles, these constitutional principles that you referenced? I mean, in BRI, we talk uh, a lot about um, inalienable rights, natural rights. We talk about um, equality and justice and, and liberty, uh, all sort of the, the, the bigger ideals here. But, the, but then we talk about some of the more specific constitutional ideals, like you know, separation of powers, checks and balances, federalism. All the good stuff, all this stuff that gets me really, really excited about what I do as a senior fellow at BRI. And I know it gets you excited too, so I see you chuckling over there, but I know you get pumped about well, it. I get more pumped, I think, about the foundational principles, natural yeah. rights, the ones that we're all born with, because right. I think that's, that's such a cool idea. But again, that idea at the time when the Constitution was written was not something that everybody bought into. So I think it's... Right. I don't know. Would you say it's it's fair to say that we take these ideas for granted? No, I, I don't know. I, I, I think they're there, right? I mean, I think they're always present. Americans, I think, have an ins ins instinctual love of liberty. Uh, you know, we, we, we love equality. We want to see equality under the law. Um, we all, all want to live under a just uh, constitutional order, uh, have equal justice. So, so I, I think that sort of our heart 
yearns for them, not only as human beings, but as Americans. Um, but then, you know, we, you know, sometimes we forget um, some of the more specific ones like separation of powers, checks, balances, you know, federalism. Why, why should I care about these things? Bicameralism, two house legislatures. These seem somewhat distant, maybe from our ordinary everyday experience that we don't think about them. But I, I think those, as you said, those kind of natural rights principles, those really foundational ideals, I think are there. Uh, they may be a little latent, but they're there and with us all the time. While we're at this red light, Tony, I would be interested in hearing a little bit about the origin story of the Constitution because I am such a history nerd. I love the backstory on anything. So we have this document, Constitution. It gets its own day, like free cone day at Ben and Jerry's, <laughs> which is my personal favorite civic holiday, by the way. So how did this document come to be? Give me the Sparks note version. Well, it came it came to be because we we failed in our first attempt, right? I mean, so I can identify with failure. Yeah, I mean, we all can, right? I mean, they they, they launched this this experiment in liberty, and it, it didn't go real well at first, right? I mean, they fought the Revolutionary War to a successful conclusion, and started off with the Articles of Confederation, but as you know, pretty much largely didn't work. Don't need separation of powers check. Don't need any checks and balances. Check. Don't need a two-house legislature. Check. Uh, don't need a very strong central government. The states can run everything. Check. I mean, they were just checking all the wrong boxes. What is the most egregious thing the states were doing under the Articles of Confederation? Because they were kind of going hog wild, Ooh. is my understanding. That, that, that's, that, that's a good one. I, there, there's so many, right? I mean, they were almost at war with each other. They were engaging on these trade wars, violating the peace treaty of, of 1783 passing tariffs on each other uh, or taxes. I mean, they, you know, they, they were basically doing everything to impede the national government and each other. And, and, and just, they were getting taxed and they're like, uh-uh, not up in here. They're not paying, <laughs> we're not sending the central government money. If you could declare war on any state, what would it be and why? Uh, back then it would have been definitely Rhode Island. <laughs> Rhode Island? <laughs> yes. Why? Because they were frustrating the whole thing, right? They kept voting no on everything and were just impeding all the workings of the government. So yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. 